On tonight's program, we're going to take a break from our Bible study on Copernicus and the Jews, and we're going to go back to the National Religious Broadcasters Convention that we participated in in Anaheim, California. And we're also going to talk about our nationwide petition to remove Ilhan Omar from Congress. And of course, I want to thank you for tuning in this evening. Hello, my name is Lori Cardoza Moore. I am the president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. The mission of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of growing worldwide anti-Semitism. We accomplish this goal by producing award-winning programs like Focus on Israel and distributing them to 200 nations through our 20 global media partners, reaching over 2 billion viewers worldwide. Since our mission is to educate and activate Christians, Jews, and all people of conscience to stand against this rising threat of anti-Semitism around the globe, we want to provide an engagement platform to you, for you to ask the questions that you have and share comments about this growing threat and how you can combat it in your community. So email us at comments at pjtn.org. Whether it's in textbooks, on college campuses, our communities, in Moss, our state legislatures, or in Congress, we want to provide you the tools to combat this growing threat. I also want to encourage you to become a PJTN watchman and take your watch on the wall in your community to combat anti-Semitism. If you are interested in starting a local chapter or if you see or hear about anti-Semitic incidents in your community, we want to hear from you. Now, we're, we're going to take a quick look at another way that you can support PJTN. Take a look. This month marks the 70th anniversary of the historic declaration of the State of Israel. God's sovereign hand can be seen all over this land. Included in the celebrations is the opening of the American Embassy right here in Jerusalem. In honor of this celebration, PJTN is offering a special 70th anniversary package, which includes a captivating new book and an award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archaeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. Now back to the 2019 Proclaim Conference in Anaheim, California at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. My first interview was with Tudor Patan with Alpha Omega in Romania. I spoke with Tudor about the impact of our Focus on Israel show in his community. And here's what he had to say. Take a look. Welcome back to NRB and to our booth again this year. It's great to be with you. And I want to personally thank you for helping us bring our message about Israel and our biblical responsibility as Christians to stand with our Jewish brethren in Israel against the rise of anti-Semitism. And you know, last year when we were here, we didn't see the anti-Semitism at the level that we're seeing today and how critically important it is that we bring this message to more Christians around the globe. Tudor, tell us a little bit about your experience with the programming and why, um, um, how this program, Focus on Israel, has impacted your audience. What are you hearing? So, as you know, uh, we didn't estimate uh, years ago that anti-Semitic spirit will be so strong, will erase so quickly in Europe and also in Romania and Eastern Europe. So, uh, even from the beginning, uh, we started uh, 
our ministry 25 years ago. In fact, we celebrate 25 this year. Even from the beginning, we have on our list Israel, trying to educate people about Israel, what means Israel, what is the right position of our individual churches, families, communities, and country to Israel. So this is still a priority for us. Uh, your program, we receive your programs, I think. We start to put on our channel, our channel Alpha Omega TV. It's on the air from 2006. It's the first Christian channel in Eastern Europe in uh, our la in Romanian language. We hear uh, uh, your program, I think, for five years, I think. Yeah. And uh, it's a, a weekly permanence, a weekly presence on our network. We are running on, on the weekend. And on the weekend, we have some program about Israel. Are people are more sensitive about Israel issues. Right. So the main, uh, Im the main impact of your program are to educate people, to inform people about Israel, about issues. Uh, unfortunately, half of the church, many churches in Romania and all over, they, they mention that Israel is not anymore part of the God's plan for the, this season, for this time. So they embrace replacement, replacement theology. theology. So replacement theology from the beginning, it's one of our major points, to find, again, replacement theology uh, as a, a major point in the uh, church doctrine in Romanian history. This is a, and of course, now we have ad additional points as a priority. Beside replacement theology, we have, uh, we have to fight about moving the embassy in Jerusalem, recognizing right. Jerusalem, about talking openly about what means two-state solution, what means occupied territories. Mm -hmm. So many issues that we want to, to present from Christian perspective. And your program are helping us a lot. It's a, you are a voice in Romania to tell the truth about uh, God's plan for Israel and about how the, we as a church, as an individual Christian, as a leaders uh, have to be positioned uh, uh, towards Israel. Absolutely. Well, we so appreciate your willingness to bring this me message to your audience. Um, you know, we have been bro broadcasting for many, many years with, with, your, with yes. Alpha Omega. Omega. Tell me um, the response that you're receiving from your audience. How, what, what kind of response did you get initially when you were when you first started broadcasting our program? And is your audience starting to be more receptive to this message? Do you see the connection between the education you've been doing when you started and now today? Yes, for sure. Uh, initially, the program was among other programs on our channel, but slowly uh, the the program Pro Israel Voices and your uh, the, one of the main voices became important for our network. Mm -hmm. Honestly, after every kind of event, because we participate to different conferences, events, taping. At the end, we ask people, what do you think about the event? But also, what do you think about Alpha Omega? What do you like more than Alpha Omega? And uh, at least 50%, they tell, told us, finally, I understood, I understand, I realized, looking to Alpha Omega, what's about Israel? Because in our, our country was a, post, it's a, was a communist country for decades. We was completely isolated. No, no too much teaching about Israel, about other things. Uh, so now we open our mind, our eyes, and one of the main topics that came on our table as a Christian, it's Israel. And again, not all the churches, they embrace uh, uh, right theology. They are more uh, a part of the doctrine, replacement theology. So we have to fight against. We have your program, we have uh, other program about Israel, but to try to educate, to educate, to inform people, to challenge people. Of course, now uh, uh, on our list, it's uh, about the embassy. What, what uh, moving the, embassy, the Romanian embassy just uh, this week uh, on Monday, our prime minister uh, on Saturday, our prime minister announced that we move the embassy. We want to move the embassy. Fantastic. It will be important thing that Romania will be the first European country moving officially clear the embassy. But again, already opposition started, so it's a big fight, big fight. Uh, what I want to add to this, uh, we believe uh, uh, me and my wife, we are more also on a prayer for Israel. Yes. Prayer is an important thing. We believe more and more Romania is a country that God is raising to be a prayer force, prayer platform for Israel, Amen. close to Israel. So more and more voices pro Israel. Uh, I think God will use Romania m more in the future to be a voice for Israel. And uh, I think your program is helping us a lot. How to be officially clear on different levels, church level and political level, a voice uh, for God's plan for Israel. Amen. So do you see the the people that are responding positively to the message of Israel, is it the, the people in the pews, the lay people? Is it the Christian leadership? Or do you see there's a, there's a struggle with the leadership because of what has been handed down in seminaries? Because that, of course, is one of the biggest problems that we deal with, is that seminaries don't teach the Hebraic roots of the Christian faith. 
So is it more the people in the pews that are responding positively to your message? Do you see a growing number of Christian leaders who are responding equally as so, positive? Yes, uh, I see as everywhere a separation. Mm -hmm. They are uh, Christian leaders, they are uh, the Goats Christian. and sheep nations. Goats and sheep nations, yes. yes. Uh, about this, uh, when we start to promote, to talk about goats and sheep nation, there was a big opposition. Why talk about this? Because many Christians, unfortunately, in Romania, not only, they believe Christianity is only a personal relation one-to-one -to, -one to God. Don't talk me about God's plan with nations. So this is another battlefield, beside Israel, beside the other thing, to talk about God's plan for nations. God has a plan for nation, for United States, for Romania, for Israel, and uh, he operates at this level. So it is another battle we have to fight with this, and your program helps us a lot uh, to align our nation. So we try to, uh, to introduce in a discussion, in a political area, in a spiritual area, in a, all the area of society, this right. additional dimension, replacement theology, God's plan for the nations, uh, uh, alignment of the nation. We talk about this, how our nation, uh, Romania, could be aligned with God's plan, and part of this alignment is the right alignment with Israel, um, and of course, uh, um, uh, talking about pol politics uh, in, uh, and the religion. Many say politics is one, religion is one. Don't mix this. We have this kind of opposition in Romania, so we have to find on this, on this uh, Christian values in all the segment of society, including in politics. I think it's a it's a shift. Romania is a sh shift position, a realignment position. I think we uh, try to do our best. We have opposition. We need your help and your viewers help for prayer that Romania will become a key nation in the coming in the next weeks, months and years in the battle for Israel. It's interesting because you know you talk about how people say you have to keep politics and religion separate. Yes. But um, historically, even de Tocqueville talked about the greatness of America and what made America great was that we were able to combine religion and politics together because it was faith that governed the politicians and kept them, you know, in check, if you will. But he didn't, de Tocqueville didn't see that in France because France would never align or unite politics with, with faith. And so it's interesting that you're dealing with that struggle in Europe. Tell us about your, the reach with Alpha Omega. How many viewers or potential viewers are you reaching so, every week? Uh, as I mentioned, Alpha Omega, we have a different channel that we spread the gospel. Right. Our main project is the channel, the Alpha Omega TV satellite network. Through the satellite, uh, Utilsat 16 degree, we cover the whole Europe. Mm -hmm. So some people are downloading, uh, are reaching through satellite, but the main audience is through cable TV. Mm -hmm. In Romania from 2010, so for, for almost nine years, right. we are in a mass carry list. So all the cable system have to include Alpha Omega in their package. So officially, uh, as a potential audience, we are in 80% of, uh, of the homes in Romania. Doesn't mean that everyone is watching Alpha Omega, right. but potentially they can reach us. So the population of Romania is up to two mil 20 million. So I want to say that 10 million, 15 million have the possibility to reach Alpha Omega. So other possibility is through internet, through social media, uh, and I hope we will be able to expand the impact of your program through internet, through, through Facebook, and uh, through YouTube. So I think uh, uh, many Romanians are watching uh, uh, your program and program related to Israel and the Middle East. I want to share something. On, on TV, we cannot uh, make the measurements exactly, right. but uh, by <coughs> download, we can see what kind of program are most watched. So uh, there are two categories of programs who are on the top of our audience. Uh -huh. Something, news, event, comments on what's happened in the world, in especially Middle East and Israel, and some add stories, testimony about salvation. The, these are two main points of interest for our ministry, and we want to focus on this. And uh, uh, we see our audience in Romania is mainly Orthodox Christianity. The evangelical are 5% maximum, or born-again Christians. So, even uh, the audience from that area, from the nominal Christianity, they came to us, they feel that something has happened. It's not a, a linear uh, development of the event, it's something has happened. So this is a reason that they watch more carefully everything dealing with the events, with Israel, with the Middle East, wow. because something is on the air. Wow. We are very close in Romania mm -hmm. to Russia, to Turkey, to Middle East. We have some uh, challenges from the, the West uh, European community. We are in the middle trying to keep the Christian values. But I, again, the Christian feels something happened and they have to understand through God's eyes 
the events. And your program is helping us uh, to do this uh, because it's important to see all, everything that happened around us, looking to the news, to the TV, to uh, webs, to see everything through God's eyes because the time is short and the dynamic is mar much more accelerated. Amen. So if you wouldn't mind um, just telling us how important is it for Alpha Omega to continue to receiving our programming because of course we're in the process of raising money to produce our more new content for our um, yes. for, for our for um, as our our, pub, our uh, networks. How important is it for you and for your ministry that you continue to receive this important award-winning programming with this important crucial message? So, Lord, it's more important than ever because Romania as and as other many nations are in a crossroad at a point of decisions. And every program, every idea, every, every spiritual revelation, insight, it's a crucial for our nation to take the right decision now. Because as you said, it's a the sheep nation, God nation. We are in the key position now as a nation to choose the, the right way. And the, the program that you are, uh, you are giving to us, give us uh, this perspective as a level of nations, as a, level, as a higher level, not only as an individual level. So this program, it's a crucial, it's a unique program. We have a lot of uh, program with a biblical perspective or uh, Holy Land. Nice. There are many, we are hearing all of them. But this program, uh, it's one of to bring the, the God's perspective at the level of nations, at the God's plan for nations. Amen. So thank you for this and uh, thank you for your viewers. In fact, through your program, many of your viewers that support are part of what God is doing in Romania. Thank God. Thank God. Well, God bless you, sir. Thank you. And thank you so much. We enjoy partnering with you in bringing the message of Israel to all of Europe, including Romania and the surrounding nations. My next interview was with Todd Starnes with Fox Nation. Todd and I addressed the issue of the anti-Semitic, anti-American, anti-Judeo-Christian, pro-Islamic content in textbooks. And we also talked about Ilhan Omar and removing her. Of course, we discussed the petition that is located at PJTN.org. Let's take a look at what Todd had to say. She is the, the founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the, the Nations. Uh, Lori, it is great to have you uh, on the program, and welcome to, to Southern California. Oh, thank you, Todd. It's great to be back on the program after last week, and here we are together again. You know, one of the things I appreciate about you is, uh, is your organization is, is really one of the, the few in the country that's educating people about, about radical Islam and Sharia law. And uh, you came to mind yesterday on this uh, story we were talking about out of uh, Philadelphia, I'm sorry, out of Pennsylvania, where a, uh, a Republican lawmaker, she was praying in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. at the, the opening legislative session of the assembly. A Muslim lawmaker uh, took great offense, accused her of Islamophobia. And now the Democrats in, in Pennsylvania have declared war on this poor lady. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a shame because the United States of America has opened up our borders to people of different faiths, different nationalities. And for someone of the Islamic faith to come into a Judeo-Christian nation and tell us that we can't pray in one of those faiths or in Jesus' name or in Yeshua's name that's the height of hip hypocrisy. We have had Muslim clerics who have prayed in Congress and in, in Washington, D.C. You don't hear for Christians or Jews or people of other faiths saying, oh, no, you can't come and pray. We are a respectful nation. We allow people of faith. But we are, Todd, a Judeo-Christian nation. And so because of that, that's why people do. We serve in our government, and that's why people do pray. But isn't that interesting, though, because you bring up a good point. We are a Judeo-Christian nation. Correct. And our, under our system of government, people can practice whatever faith they want to right. practice. However, under the Islamic faith tradition, right. you can't do that. Right. We see this movement growing with regards to um, Islam challenging, Islamists challenging our heritage. You know, um, one of the things that you and I have talked about in the past are textbooks and education. Unfortunately, we are not teaching our children about the Judeo-Christian heritage 
of our nation. It is that heritage that this Constitution operates, this constitutional republic offer, operates and provides the, the ability of people of all faiths, different nationalities, to come and live in the United States and practice their faith freely, unlike in Islamic countries. Look at all the Christians that are being persecuted around the world. We hear it all the time. Churches that are being destroyed because of Christians in Islamic countries. So now the beauty of America is all people are welcome. All people can worship their, their faith the way they want to. And, and that's what I, I think troubled me the most is that you had these Democrats piling on and saying, oh, the Christian prayer, praying in the name of Jesus, that's offensive, that's disrespectful to, to, to the Muslims. Uh, this is who we are as America. That's exactly right, and we welcome everybody. But you know what, it's that, it, again, it's that foundation, it's that truth that allows other people of faith to be protected, to worship God the way they want to. We're going to be breaking some news here in just a moment on this radio program, and, and I want, we'll, we'll talk about why you are here at NRB in, in just a moment, but you brought up the textbook situation. Yes. And this, to me, is, is, the, bigger, is the bigger issue, is how American children are being educated mm -hmm. about the history of, of Islam, right. and quite frankly, um, at the expense of, of Jewish and Christian faith traditions. Absolutely. So you bring up such a great point, because, Todd, you know, back in 2012, we found a textbook in the belt buckle of the Bible Belt, Williamson County, Tennessee, that legitimized Palestinians blowing themselves up in a Jerusalem restaurant because they were waging a war against Israeli government policies and army actions. As we began to dig deeper into that one textbook, we found that the content in the text textbook, pro-Islamic content, was not only unconstitutional on the federal level, but unconstitutional on the state level because we were dedicating 37 pages to Islam, favoring the religion of Islam over Judaism and Christianity, which again is the foundation of our faith. Here's what here's what I don't understand. Maybe you can help me help me out on this. Um, when you look at at the the the, um, the more conservative Islamic, when you look at the Islamic faith, it seems to be contrary to to what those in the in the radical left wing education system mm -hmm. support, LGBT movement. Right. Uh, you've got um, you know all these other kinds of issues here. It seems to be contrary to that. So why are they embracing these uh, these Islamists that are rewriting history? It's so the intersectionality. I mean, we hear that word all the time bantered about because these are ways for for different groups to intersect in a common agenda. You know, Dr. Zudi Jasser, we're in the process of, of submitting a white paper on the indoctrination of America's children to Betsy DeVos. And we have compiled, we've have, had 11 contributors compile. One of those contributors is Dr. Zudi Jasser, who is a Muslim, and he is a Muslim who is seeking reform within the Islamic movement. And he even says the content in the textbooks is indoctrinating our children. He doesn't want that content um, edu or taught to our children in America either. All right, let's talk about the, the, the reason you are here at, at NRB. You have been very outspoken about Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Um, Absolutely. I've been very troubled by the anti-Semitic language spewing out of her mouth. Yes. And you are too. And what are you going to be doing here at NRB? Well, you know, our mission, Todd, is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with Israel and the Jewish people against the rise of anti-Semitism. And Ilhan Omar's comments are outrageous. They disturb me as well because she is trying to normalize anti-Semitism in the United States of America. But not only that, she is also tied to Muslim Brotherhood front groups like Islamic Relief USA and CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Islamic Relief USA is tied to Muslim Brotherhood front groups, terrorist front groups. CARE was listed as an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terrorist fundraising operation in the history of the United States of America. She is speaking at fundraising events for these organizations in the Islamic Relief USA was raising money for Yemen. And she was there as their keynote speaker as a sitting congresswoman. That is outrageous. Who is she raising money for in Yemen? Because we see Yemen is at war. There's a battle going on there. Where is the money going? Is it like the Holy Land Foundation, where they, took, they were saying that they were raising money for humanitarian aid, but they were really raising money for terrorists? 
And you've got all this evidence. You guys have been doing the research, the investigation. We have compiled all the information and the evidence. We're going to talk about that in the press the press conference um, later the, on this afternoon. These are some pretty shocking allegations. Absolutely. Well, you know, the problem is, and Todd, this is what I don't understand. How does CARE get, a, how are they allowed to get away with what they get away with? They're not only, they haven't only infiltrated our schools and publishing content, instructional materials to teach our children. In fact, we just had a huge victory in San Diego. County where five parents filed a lawsuit against CARE because they were indoctrinating and promoting the religion of Islam to their children in public schools and they won. This was recent, this was last week that this, this hearing went down. So it's important that we as Americans stand up and confront these issues. These groups should not be operating with ties to terrorist groups. They should not be operating in the United States of America. And Ilhan Omar needs to understand that we are a Judeo-Christian nation. She may not like that fact, but that is our history, and that is why we are who we are. When you when you found out that, that Congress, that the Democrats would not condemn uh, Ms. Omar for, for what she had said. It was outrageous. It was outrageous, Todd. Were you surprised? Nancy Pelosi spoke at APAC yesterday, and she talked about how she condemns anti-Semitism. Well, you know what, Nancy Pelosi? Where were you when that resolution was being worked out? Why didn't you, in your leadership role, pull that resolution and tell your colleagues, don't come to me with a, a resolution until you, you condemn Ilhan Omar specifically and you condemn anti-Semitism once and for all? And no, don't water it down with all these other isms. We're here with uh, Laurie Cardoza Moore. She is the founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. Uh, folks, a very important group that you need to be aware of, and they're doing some tremendous work in this country. Uh, maybe you have a question. Maybe you have seen some of this uh, propaganda in your local public schools. Give us a call, 888-788-9910. That's 888-788-9910. Lori, can you stick around for a few more minutes? Absolutely. I know you are a good Southern girl. No living, sweet tea? Living in Franklin, Tennessee. <laughs> There's no sweet tea around this place. Oh, no. It's we can't have this. Except for Chick-fil-A, maybe. Oh, there you go. The official chicken of the Lord. That's what we call Chick-fil-A, by right. the way. So, but you are, you, I mean, so you guys are based there in, in Tennessee. Absolutely. Yeah, we've been there um, since 2005 when we started the organization. We got involved right after 9-11, and then we started hearing from people all over, Jews and Christians, saying, when, I want to support what you're doing. You know, are you a nonprofit? And that's when we, we birthed PJTN. You know, when, when dealing with these Isla with the Islamic radicals, mm -hmm. I was I was having a conversation in my neighborhood with a um, uh, you know with with someone about this who's a liberal, and and I said, uh, and this guy, I think the guy was, the, yeah, the guy was uh, was gay, uh, and I said, hey, look, you know, the Islamic radicals, they want to kill all of us. They want to kill Christians, Jews, uh, LGBT folks. You know, that's we're talking, right. So we've got to. You know, this is a, this is one of those uh, issues where everybody can find common ground Correct. to take a stand. Absolutely. Freedom is so critically important. And that's, again, Todd, it's why we're asking for the investigation into Ilhan Omar, because yeah. we just because of her ties and her associations to these groups like CARE and like Islamic Relief, it's these organizations are tied to the Muslim Brotherhood. What are they doing operating in our country? What is she doing going and speaking at fundraising events for them? And we have also petitioned the Attorney General, William Barr, to launch a full and thorough investigation into Ilhan Omar, her relationships with these organizations and the organizations. Let, let's talk about the website because that's where the uh, the petition is. And, and I understand what more than 20,000 people uh, have already signed We've got 26,000 people. Wow. Um, your audience can go to pjtn.org, sign that petition. We are trying to collect as many signatures as possible. Um, we are, during our press conference today, we're going to, we're petitioning President Trump to please launch the investigation, to in, encourage um, the, the Attorney General to launch this investigation and ask Pelosi to remove Ilhan Omar because of her anti-Semitic values and because she does, she's hanging out with subversive groups that have who's who's um, whose mission is to destroy our judeo-christian constitutional republic all right again uh, the website ladies and gentlemen so that you can sign this petition is uh, pjtn.org that's pjn i'm sorry pjtn.org 
Proclaiming Justice to the Nations is the, the organization. You know, Laurie, I want to ask you about um, uh, about this movement, um, because I know you've done some work with Pamela Geller. Uh, Brigitte Gabriel's also a, a really outspoken voice on this issue. Um, and yet you guys come under fierce attack. Absolutely. We've had death threats. All of us have had death threats. But you know something? We have to speak out. You know, we're part of the generation that was educated accurately. You know, we have it. We hear about, you know, President Obama said, oh, um, Islam has had a major, played a major role in the history of the United States of America. Well, you know, they have. But what President Obama failed to tell us is that Islam, if we remember our first confrontation as a country with Islam, it was with the Mohammedans. It was with the Bar Barbary pirates. They were capturing our merchant vessels, taking control of them, taking our merchant marines, holding them captive. It was Thomas Jefferson and John Adams who had to go before Congress and say, look, we can't pay this tax anymore, the jizya tax. We have got to stop this. And of course, that's when we went to war. It's why we started. We have our, our um, merchant marines. Um, uh, they were birthed at that time, but that history is not being taught to our children anymore, Todd. And, and the, the, the other issue that concerns me and bothers me, and we're seeing this uh, happen across Western Europe right now, there is this idea that you can't offend the Muslims. Right. Uh, and this happened right after 9-11, if you remember, uh, when the TSA was formed and they, they said, we can't profile um, you can't profile anybody, which is why now all of us have right. to go through these, uh, you know, horrendous, uh, you know, searches at the airports. Right. Well, you know, if we remember 9-11, it was 19 hijackers of the Islamic faith that they flew planes into a field in Pennsylvania and into our government buildings in Washington, D.C. and into New York, the they, Twin Towers. They weren't Lutherans. They weren't Episcopalians. No. They weren't. We're talking about radical Islamists. That's exactly right. There are Muslims we know that live in the United States who came here to escape freedom. But look at the rights that are being taken, even from women, Todd. We have women that, um, girls who are being forced to um, female genital mutilation. We have the Saeed girls' daughters in Dallas, Texas, who were shot dead by their father in the back of his taxi cab years ago because they were becoming too westernized. In, in um, I think it was Phoenix, Arizona, there was a, a Muslim girl who was too westernized. Her father ran her over, killed her. This cannot happen in the United States of America. We should not tolerate this. And so you, you and your organization, you, you are sort of watchdogs on this kind of stuff, and, and, and you talk about this on your website. Well, we got involved with this really because of anti-Semitism, because a lot of these Islamists want to destroy, they want to wipe Israel off the map, they want to um, kill the Jews. There's a, there are threats against Jews and Christians by this faith. You don't hear Christians talking about this. It's not the Jews who are threatening other people's lives and, and way of living. There are People are welcome to come into this country. You know, and it's a shame because look at Ilhan Omar. Look at what the United States did for her and her family brought them over and look at the lack of respect she has for this country, this this free nation that allowed her family to be safe and worship freely. And we've got about 20 seconds here, but look at the lack of respect from the Democrat Party. Oh, who can't even condemn anti-Semitism. It's pathetic. The, the resolution was pathetic that the Democrats can't do that. No, we have to speak up, Todd. It's Jews and Christians who are standing up and saying no more, not on our watch. Good stuff. All right. Well, God Laurie, bless you. Laurie, God bless you. And I want you to know you've got a platform here on the program, so uh, keep us posted when those crazy stories come up. Absolutely, Todd. Right. Thank you. Laurie Cardoza Moore, ladies and gentlemen. She is the founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. Uh, you got to go check out this great website. She has pjtn.org. That's pjtn.org. All right, we got to take a break here. Coming up for the... From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews. We must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends, for if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge, but anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers 
are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over 1 billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. If there's one thing history has taught the Jewish people, a place they can go in time of need is essential, and Israel fulfills that role. But the need for a Jewish state is not limited to being only a refuge for Jews. Jewish tradition in Israel grants full rights for women and people of all races, faiths, and gender. This tradition is what often makes Israel among the first countries to send doctors and field hospitals to any place where a natural disaster occurs, utilizing their medical advances to save lives worldwide. Muslims, Christians, and people of every faith or those of no faith have the freedom to worship or not worship as they choose. For Muslims, the Jewish state goes out of its way to provide this freedom. For example, every Israeli university gives students the option of deferring their exams during the month of Ramadan. The Knesset calls off all sessions at sunset during Ramadan to ensure that Muslim Knesset members can break their fasts with the traditional iftar dinner. In an open and democratic manner, opportunities for education, advancement, and careers exist for all citizens in the Jewish state. Sadly, such rights and opportunities do not exist in any of the Muslim Arab states. For example, in neighboring Jordan, Jews cannot become citizens. And in Saudi Arabia, no non-Muslim can become a citizen. Saying that Israel must cease to exist as a Jewish state while accepting that other countries define themselves as Muslim is pure hypocrisy. In most of these countries, no rights exist for non-Muslims, women, and the LGBT community. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference. Because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at PJTN.org. Up next is our press briefing that we put on at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention each year. This year, we, we address the issue of Ilhan Omar and her ties to Muslim Brotherhood front groups, as well as her loyalty to the U.S. Constitution. We also called on President Trump to launch an investigation through his Justice Department to um, look into the activities with nefarious groups that Ilhan Omar is raising money for in the United States. Let's take a look. I want to thank you all for coming. For those of you who are not familiar with proclaiming justice to the nations, our mission is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of anti-Semitism. We accomplish that goal by producing award-winning programming. We distribute those programs to broadcasters around the world. We're now with our 21 global media partners reaching over 2 billion <coughs> viewers with our message. We as believers and Americans have reached a pivotal time, a Kairos moment in our spiritual lives and in the life of our country. This is a season marked by the reemergence and ancient force that was born over 3,000 years ago in the history of one nation and one people. That nation is Israel and that people, the Jews. That old enemy, the spirit of Amalek, again seeks to destroy once and for all, if possible, God's land and his people. That spirit is again mustering the hatred used by empires of the past, such as Persia, Greece, and Rome, feeding upon the genocidal rage of national socialism and Islamic terrorism, and now infiltrating churches 
with the heresy of replacement theology. Now it sows anti-Zionism among younger Christians and Americans through the propaganda in our textbooks and our school curriculum. Today, I stand here among thousands of media professionals attending the NRB convention. Men and women who dedicate themselves tirelessly and selflessly to make known the truth of the gospel of the kingdom of God. To each of you, I give the challenge. Join PJTN on the front lines of this war against the anti-Semitic, anti-Judeo-Christian, anti-American, and anti-Israel media arrayed against us. This conflict is real. It's a call to a battle in which more is at stake than land or wealth. The outcome of this conflict will determine the destiny of untold numbers of souls and the direction of many nations. In 1939, days after the Nazi invasion of Poland, Winston Churchill said, we must not underrate the gravity of the task which lies before us or the temerity of the ordeal to which we shall not be found unequal. There is a generation here now ready to prove itself. Presently, we find ourselves besieged by those seeking to limit, if not steal, our freedoms and rights. The freedom to speak the truth and the right to do so without retribution. We are in a time which many of our elected officials in Congress have feet of clay and do nothing in the face of blatant, ongoing anti-Semitic lies. Lies about American Jews, having divided loyalties, lies about Israel's occupying Palestinian land, a ceaseless stream of lies designed to subvert and persuade the unaware into believing falsehoods. Americans will not tolerate anti-Semitism, whether from a Christian nationalist, the KKK, or an Islamist. Three freshman members of Congress have expressed anti-Semitic and anti-Israel statements and bias with Congresswoman Ilhan Omar leading the charge. They are waging an unholy war to sanitize and normalize anti-Semitism. Let me state une unequivocally, we will not tolerate their threats. We are, after all, Americans. You may have seen Fox News recently bow to this new normal when Judge Jeanine Pirro's program was suspended. She did nothing more than ask Ilhan Omar the same question Omar raised about her Jewish colleagues in Congress. So let me give you some facts and information I've learned through my research on Ilhan Omar that warrants an investigation. Ilhan Omar could be in violation of 18 U.S. Federal Code 2385 and the 14th Amendment by aiding and abetting the enemy. This is a direct result of her speaking at a fundraising event for Muslim Brotherhood front groups, with 45 men from her district joining ISIS and Al-Shabaab in Somalia. The FBI has designated her congressional district to be the terrorist recruiting capital of the United States. Omar received $5,000 from CARE for a contribution to her campaign. She recently spoke at a CARE fundraising event not far from here. As you may know, CARE was listed as an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terrorist fundraising operation in the history of the United States. Of course, in 2009, the FBI cut ties with CARE. In 2014, the United Arab Emirates listed CARE as a terrorist group. CARE's San Francisco director, Zara Bilu said of Israel, quote, I am not going to legitimize a country that I don't believe has a right to exist. Omar also spoke at an Islamic Relief USA fundraiser last month. This organization also has ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. At the same event, another Islamic Relief USA speaker, Yusuf Abdullah, has publicly advocated for violence against Jews on social media. After the Kenyan Mall massacre, Omar blamed Islamist terrorism on U.S. involvement in other people's affairs. Her, appointment, her, her appointed position on the Foreign Relations Committee provides a certain level of security clearance. She may even have access to vital information 
that she could share with these nefarious groups. She also supports the destruction of the State of Israel through BDS, or the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Movement, as well as other means. These are the reasons why we have launched our campaign, campaign to demand Ilhan Omar be removed from our government. In March of 1932, Hitler's National Socialist Party received a majority of seats in the Reichstag, and he was named chancellor in January of 33. Less than a year later, the Nazis moved to silence all opposition in the media. Newspapers became, became propaganda rags, and more than 3,600 papers and magazines were under their control. Radio station broadcasts and newsreels shown in cinemas were supervised and censored. Protestant churches and many Christians offered little resistance. Many churchgoers were also party members. When a well-known pastor was named Reich Bishop, many Protestants embraced the program of the Nazi-backed facade called Positive Christianity. A movement that mixed ideas of racial purity and Nazi ideology with elements of Christianity. Equally as shameful were the many university professors who welcomed the Nazi government and the civil service law that forbade Jewish professors from teaching or researching. Most fraternities and student groups already banned Jews and often protested against professors they believed did not uphold traditional German values. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stood virtually alone in opposition to all that the Nazis stood for. Do we have the courage to be different? Will we raise the challenge and face down those who seek to destroy our liberties as fascists did 85 years ago? We, have we learned anything from that time period? To these questions, I say, like the Israelis, Leolam Lo. Never again. We will not be bystanders to their effort to hijack America and spread the ancient hatred of anti-Semitism. In the midst of fake news, left-leaning news, disinformation, and propaganda, there is one glaring truth. The silence from Christian media on these topics is deafening. We must take a stand and we must speak out. To President Trump, I want to thank you for having the courage to move the U.S. Embassy to, to Jerusalem and for recognizing Israel's rights to the Golan Heights. But also to President Trump, I am making a plea. Two weeks ago, we petitioned Attorney General Barr to launch a full and thorough investigation into Ilhan Omar's ties to the Muslim Brotherhood front groups and her fundraising activities for CARE and Islamic Relief USA. We have also petitioned Speaker Pelosi to remove Ilhan Omar from Congress because of these associations and her anti-Semitic attacks. President Trump, I am respectfully asking you, sir, to charge Attorney General Barr to execute this request. Ilhan Omar has repeatedly made anti-Semitic statements that could incite violence against our Jewish communities and the state of Israel. Recent polls indicate that 60% of Americans support Israel over the Palestinian Authority. This comes as we see the constant barrage of rocket and terrorist attacks that Israelis endure on a daily basis. In closing, I want to remind each of you in the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when he knew the church was facing its most challenging hour, he said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Queen Esther found herself facing a similar challenge when her uncle Mordecai gave her some sobering advice before she spoke to her husband, the king. He said, quote, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jewish people will come. It will arise from another place. But you and your fa father's family will perish. And who knows 
but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. How will God judge the church in this our hour if we remain silent? Like Israel, we too are facing the anti-Semite Amalek. God told the Israelites that we that he would wage war against Amalek from generation to generation. He told the Israelites, never forget what the Amalekites did to you as you were wandering through the desert to the promised land. How does this warning speak to us? As Christians, the Apostle Paul reminded us that we have been grafted into the commonwealth of Israel and are thus heirs according to the promise. Many Christians overlook this important text in scripture, but Dietrich Bonhoeffer understood this biblical truth. I want to close with a sobering message from Winston Churchill, who faced a similar enemy in his generation. He said, quote, there comes a special moment in everyone's life, a moment of which that person was born. That moment when he sees it, will fulfill his mission, a mission for which he is uniquely qualified. In that moment, he finds greatness. It is his finest hour. In that, may we as Christian communicators heed his words. Finally, I had a chance to speak with media veteran, Mr. Michael Little, the chairman of the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. We discussed the changing dynamics in media and the important role Christian media will play in the days ahead. Reporters and broadcasters, television programs, writers, radio programmers who have a biblical worldview meaning based upon the principles of the Bible, which include such things as the Ten Commandments and the teachings of Jesus. Those are the fundamental elements of a biblical worldview in the Judeo-Christian space. So having that framework causes a reporter to conduct him or herself in such a way that they will ask questions and they will write words and frame sentences in such a way that their biblical worldview impacts that. That's easily understood. We know that, we're familiar with that because that's been the history of the United States is over the several hundred years we've trusted that the people in journalism at least if they didn't embrace they shared the understanding that the majority of the population was from a biblical worldview. We had that context. Without that, the blunt uh, analysis would, be say, would say that there's just plain meanness that uh, occurs because man left to himself without a, a supreme uh, being a point of reference is prone to all kinds of imaginations, especially those self-centered imaginations and self-centered behavior. So it's very important that we have a perspective of a biblical worldview in order to share in this culture, uh, to start at fairness, a, a platform of fairness, and to share that perspective. I'm not just alarmed, I'm moving towards uh, scared in the sense that uh, the level of misbehavior in this realm that we're talking about is, is of such a magnitude. And it just doesn't stop with one. It, it, it kind of in, it goes on like a growing fungus that affects another reporter. And then another says, well, that's the standard now. This kind of uh, uh, almost anti-biblical worldview becomes, well, he did it, she did it, they did it, and guess what? I got to print it and got by with it or publish it, or show, or broadcast it. And I got by with it, so let's keep on going. We've got these people on the run. Let's change the world to the way we want it to be. Forget a biblical worldview. Let's shape this world the way we want it to be, and 
especially don't allow any guilt to come back on us. The challenges are that uh, after so much uh, of this kind of uh, wrongful reporting, can we call it that, wrongful reporting or biased view reporting, the problem is that after it continues to uh, grow in volume uh, and over time people in the power positions to control networks, who control outlets, who control cable systems and perish the thought be serving in, in the government like the FCC and want to listen to the quote other side and they want to officially shut us down, shut down people who have a, spirit, a Christian spiritual point of view. So that's the challenge, is we've got to stand strong, we've got to stand up, and we've got to speak out and say, we can't allow this to happen in this country. We have uh, uh, objectivity for our history has served us well, and it'll serve us well in the future, and we're not going to be oppressed by this kind of prejudicial thinking. I think we see similarities. Uh, I don't think we're at the panic stage as I think they should have been as we look back and see the terrible results of the Nazi thinking and the Nazi actions. I don't want to overreact. At the same time, we need to say there are similarities. They not only begin to marginalize the press, they begin to marginalize and silence the church, the people of God, the people who did hold the Bible up as, a, as the standard of life. And we've got to be alert. Vigilance uh, is our way of life now because there are too many who say their way is the right way and our way is things like hate speech and it's a terrible thing and it's going to ruin America. Well, it hasn't ruined America in all of these years. So we've got to be vigilant. The answer to the problem that we're discussing uh, is both spiritual and educational. We've got to be people of prayer to our God, asking Him for spiritual intervention. And at the same time, we've got to be uh, very careful about the truth being taught in all of the appropriate places. I believe in the classroom, in the Sunday school class, in the pulpits, uh, in the public schools, in the uh, offices and uh, uh, services of the federal government, state governments. Education has got to be about uh, the correct history of the Jewish people. The Jews have a saying, never again, in reference to the Holocaust. And we've got to adopt not only just the phrase, but the lifestyle. Never again will we biblically based people allow this kind of perversion to be manifest in our society. In this day of increasing polarization of people almost daily taking what we would in the past consider silly positions against the people of biblical truth and against the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're in that environment. There is now the ministry, the organization, proclaim justice to the nations. And we need to come behind them and to support them and assist them and uh, encourage them and make way for them to be established uh, in more and more places, impacting and teaching our world for the sake of truth. Well, that concludes our program for this evening. I want to remind you to please continue to keep Israel and our Jewish brethren in your prayers as this rising threat of anti-Semitism increases around the globe. I also want to remind you, if you have any prayer requests yourself, please email us your prayers at comments at pjtn.org. 
Also, you can visit our website at pjtn.org to sign the petition to remove Ilhan Omar from Congress and also get on our mailing list. Sign up to become a PJTN watchman. You can also follow us on social media like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And of course, um, don't forget to to um, email, email us your comments about our program and any uh, questions or programs you would like to or topics you would like for us to cover in our upcoming uh, PJTN online programs. I want to thank you for joining us again this evening. God bless you and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and the state of Israel. We'll see you next time on PJTN online. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at PJTN.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers.